Hello, everyone, and welcome to What's Driving Token Prices. This week, I am your host, Katie Talati. I'm the Director of Research at ARCA. Um, my team and I, all we do here is we're looking at things that are happening in the market and, and what is driving uh, price appreciation or depreciation in the digital assets market. I'm dialing in today from sunny Miami Beach Bitcoin conference. So if any of you are here and want to hang out, please feel free to hit me up, Twitter, uh, DMs are the best way. Uh, but anyway, as usual, I have some great tokens for you guys this week. Just remember, this is not intended to be investment advice, investment research recommendation. Please consult your investment professional for your own circumstances. All right. So we are getting going this week with and starting with Waves. So for those of you that are not familiar, Waves on blockchain, it was, it's been around since 2016. Um, last week, it shot up over 100%. As the market cap of Waves stablecoin USDN bubbled up, Waves has a similar stablecoin function to the Terra blockchain. So basically, to mint their stablecoin USDN, you need to deposit Waves. So a lot of crypto Twitter sleuths started hypothesizing that Waves was borrowing against USDN from its treasury to then buy more Waves, which they then used to mint more USDN. Um, essentially, and basically, by doing so, they were inflating the market cap of USDN and the price of Waves. Um, after this news broke, the USDN lost its $1 peg and was as low as 80 cents. So contrary to Terra, where anyone can arbitrage UST imbalances, USDN arbitrage has barriers to entry. This led to panic and subsequent waves sell pressure. So waves ended the week down 45%. Um, okay. Next up, we have Juno. So Juno Network, this is a Cosmos IBC chain. Um, so basically what that means is that Juno used the is using the Cosmos's SDK Tendermint. And then they're also using um, IBC, which is the inner blockchain communication system. Um, and basically they're a network for creating interoperable apps that can work between different blockchains. So they suffered a blockchain halt yesterday, which is basically the network has stopped. Um, the not, network is actually not yet since resumed, um, and the root cause of the issue has not been identified. Um, as a result, the token, the Juno token is down 16% on the news. All right, next up we have Alpha. So Alpha Finance um, has been around also for a few years. If you aren't familiar with it, it was previously a lend, borrow, DeFi platform. Um, they actually rebranded last week or earlier this week to Alpha Dow Ventures, announcing that they were going to focus full time on its incubator program. So previously they had like a lend borrow, they have a they had leverage trade uh, leverage borrowing program, um, and then they were also uh, helping pro new projects, incubating them, and offering these DeFi services. Uh, it seems that they found really good product market fit with the incubation, and so they're really going to be tackling that vertical. Um, so after. Um, uh, like I said, after several success, uh, su successes in the sector, the team decided to rebrand and focus on this effort full time. The news initially pushed the token up 45%, but it's only ending week up 10. All right. And finally, we have Celo. So Celo is a layer one blockchain um, that focuses on creating an easy to use stablecoin system. Um, um, they actually held their conference early this week in Barcelona. Um, during the conference, Celo revealed that they are uh, creating a $20 million Celo Connect fund to incentivize the development of fiat on and off ramps. Um, so that basically is uh, the ability for a crypto business to like take money, like uh, dollars in and out of the crypto system. And that's obviously really important for a stable coin ecosystem because you need a way for cash to get in and out. Um, so Celo ended the week up 16% on that news. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining. That's all I got for you this week. I hope you enjoyed our insights. Tune in here again next Wednesday at 1 p.m. Pacific to hear what's driving token prices.